do you need to buy new signs? Okay, it's all yours. Before we begin, I'd like to welcome everybody to 241. And if you haven't already been in here, I'm going to do a very quick spiel about the microphones. So instead of having those super convenient gooseneck microphones right in front of you, these ones are in the ceiling. It's mm. these two glowy green panels. So they're really cool. They're programmed to capture audio all around the room uh, without a lot of effort but it still requires you to project a little bit and more importantly, not talk into documents or your laptop. Uh, so every once in a while, if I just say, can you please speak up? That's just because we've lowered the level a little bit and we wanna make sure everyone on the far end hears. All right, and I will not interrupt you anymore. Thank you. It is 105. Okay, and this is the ARB's annual organizational meeting. I am calling the January 3rd, 2022 meeting of the Albemarle County Architectural Review Board to order. Uh, Carolyn, can you call the roll? Yes, I can if I unmute myself. Uh, Mr. Stoner. I'm here. Mr. Hancock. No, okay. Mr. Mitsuno. Here. Mr. Henningsen. Here. And Mr. Vanderwood. Here. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. A couple of announcements. Uh, first, today's meeting is a hybrid meeting. The public may access and participate in the meeting electronically. Instructions for doing so are posted on the Albemarle County website at the Albemarle County calendar. The public has real-time audio-visual access to this meeting over Zoom and real-time audio access over telephone, both as provided in the lawfully posted meeting notice. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the county's website this meeting is a public record and subject to disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act. Any more announcements, instructions for attendees. All speakers, when it is your turn to speak, please first state your name for the record. Applicants who are making presentations, note that your presentation is limited to a total of 15 minutes, which you can divide among your team members. Staff will let us know when the 15 minutes are up. If applicants in the meeting room have team members attending virtually who will need to present, please make that known when you come to the podium. Everyone who is participating virtually, please mute, mute your microphone until it is your turn to speak. Okay, as I said, this is the annual meeting, so the first item of business is election of chair. At this point, I'll ask for any nominations for chairperson. I'd like to nominate Chris Wings. Is there a second for that? Second. Okay, are there any other nominations for chair? Okay, hearing none, can I have a uh, motion to elect uh, Mr. Henningsen as chairperson for 2020? So moved. And a second for that motion. Caroline, can you call the roll? Yes, who seconded to that? No, I did. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Stoner. Aye. Mr. Matsuno? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Vanderwerf? Aye. Thank you. Great. With that, the chairperson for 2023 is Mr. Henningsen, and I will turn the meeting over to you. All right. Thank you. Um, so, uh, can I get a nomination for the vice chairperson? I concurred with Frank Hancock and who's willing to continue serving and I'd like to nominate him to continue the role. Okay. Uh, would anybody like to second that? I'll second. I'll second that, I guess. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Yeah. Um, would like would someone like to make a motion to elect Frank Hancock as vice chairperson? Two. Do so. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Uh, can we do a vote? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Aye. Mr. Mitsuno? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Vanderwerf? Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so now we're down to the 2023 calendar. Uh, the draft schedule has the ARB meeting on the first and third Monday of each month, with meetings moving to Tuesday when the Monday is a holiday. Does anyone want to make a motion to adopt this schedule for 2023? So moved. Thanks. Uh, would anyone like to second that? 
a second. Thanks. Uh, Carolyn, can we do the vote? Mr. Vanderwood? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Mitsuno? Aye. Mr. Stoner? Aye. Thank you. Thanks. So the rules of procedure. Um, does anyone want to propose changes to the rules of procedure? No. Um, would anyone like to move to approve the rules of procedure? So we see the rules of procedure. <laughs> yes, they were. I think they were. They were. They were. Really they were. They were and they're they were good. Unchanged from last year with the addition of the remote meeting. Um, so, that we can yeah, okay. Okay. so I'll move to uh, adopt them. Second. Right. Thank you. Uh, could we put it to a vote? Yes. Mr. Vanderwerf? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Man Matsudo? Aye. Mr. H Stoner? Aye. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, disclosures. Uh, do any ARB members have anything to disclose? I do not. I do not. No. Thank you. <clears throat> um, are there any members of the public that want to make a comment about a project that is not on the agenda for review? There is no one with their hand up at this time. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, there are no consent agenda items today. There is one regular review item today, which is ARB-2022-97, the trading post. Uh, Chris, do you have a presentation ready? Yes, Chris. The application being reviewed today is request to reface the existing fuel pump canopy, install a new pylon free stain sign in BP branding. The site is located along Route 29 at the southwest corner of the intersection with Taylor Gap, Taylor's Gap Road. A certificate of appropriateness was issued for the fuel pump canopy in 1990. And in 2004, the board approved the reface in the canopy to its current appearance. The changes to the fascia can be seen in this slide. A two-color 3D band and a multicolor Helios graphic on the northeast and west sides of the canopy. The entrance quarter guidelines for fuel pump canopies call for the use of one principal color and a minimalist design. However, the, however, the dimensional design and the color variety do not meet either guideline and would em emphasize the canopy and differentiate it from the existing building and surroundings. Revising the canopy to limit the fascia color to one principal color would be consistent with entrance quarter guidelines and other BP approvals in the county shown in the slide. Regarding the freestanding sign, the pylon form, height, and colors are expected to result in a sign that does not relate to its surroundings. Staff recommends that applicant consider revising the pylon sign to a monument sign or revising the base of the pylon sign to a brick that coordinates with the building and providing landscaping to integrate either sign <clears throat> style into the surrounding context. Staff recommends the changes to the proposal be reviewed by the ARB at a future meeting future meeting, however, the board could choose to approve the application with conditions. I'd be happy to answer any questions you all may have. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris. Um, so questions from ARB members. Um, Tara, do you have any questions? I don't. Um, thanks. Frank, any questions? I don't. Thanks. Uh, Days, any questions? No questions. Thanks, thanks Chris, for your report. I don't have any questions either. <laughs> Um, is the applicant here and with a presentation? Yes, we're here. All right, thank you. Yes. Um, this, uh, we'd apply this uh, to the specifics for uh, the BP specifications of the branding, understanding that uh, there's uh, restrictions in that particular zone. Uh, we would ask uh, if the canopy, the Helios on the canopy, those signs, uh, they're not offered as a, uh, where the white portion doesn't light up. Uh, 
Is it possible that those could be illuminated or they have to remain non-illuminated? Those the signs. I don't know if Chris, you had those up uh, before. Yes. Um, will those have to be uh, non illuminated? So it sounds like they, they have them saying that that, that particular um, sign um, isn't offered um, with any portion of that background being able to be opaque. So I think. Um, um, that the ARB will, members will need to discuss that as, as part of their um, conversation after the applicant is finished. Chris, can you put up the two precedent images in the county? I guess, do you all know whether either one of those is in fact illuminated or, or the Helios is illuminated? The one that has the white, um, just has the white um, uh, uh, fascia. No, um, no other color probably wouldn't matter as much having the white background of the Helios illuminated the white on white um, maybe different situation for the, the black band. So those two certain that both uh, Helios hundred uh, certain certain on uh, one on the left is, that is illuminated. Is illuminated with an yeah. opaque background. It's that um, received a um, complete ARB review of the building and the fuel pump canopy. Sorry, did you say it is illuminated, but it has an opaque background? Is we specify what opaque background in the documents that were approved. And the other one, we're not quite sure. Of. Quite sure. I have to double check on that one. And in terms of the countywide sign. These would be what illuminated panel signs, like uh, cabinet or box style signs. Yeah. yeah. And are there any other elements of those kind of lights? The Helios does not combine them. Um. Don't. Oh, the the multicolor aspect because it's forty oh, colors. So yeah. That's the reason. So I understand the, the, the colors, the striping is not allowed, correct? So we'll have to go with the white, uh, like the version on the left, correct? As far as the, the imaging on the fascia. Uh, either example is a precedent example that has been approved. Uh, the white would be approval or the, the one on the right that shows the black with the Band. So it's the thought is it's one principal color and left example it's white is a single color and the right example black is the principal color and white is a, a secondary color. Okay. So either one of those would be acceptable then, correct? Yes. Okay. A, a direct match, but the, it's more so, so the concept color-wise versus the um, uh, specific color shown. Right, so just to be clear, the guidelines say what well, one principal color, or, and that has been um, um, interpreted to mean a single color or one a band with a, a, a primary color and then a secondary color as is seen here. It does not, the guidelines do not limit it to white and black. So the stripe could be green, for example, instead of black. Right, correct. That's what I was wondering. So we could do this, the background, the black portion could be green uh, with a white trim, say top and bottom like that's white on the black. This could be white on green. Correct. Okay. But not the, the lighter portion in the center. 
which gives the uh, their their standard design is that there's a light strip that goes in that light lighter green portion. Uh, understood. Obviously, there's no light strip going to be on this one, but uh, but the light green would not be allowed. Correct. The center portion. Correct. It would not be allowed. Okay. And the Helios was it? I'm sorry. I, I was hearing part of the conversation there about the uh, the elimination on that. I'm not sure if it was a decision made or uh, would would the the Helios be allowed to be illuminated uh, or the white portion have to be opaque? Um, So when, when the applicant's presentation is done, then the ARB will go into conversation and discuss it, and then, then a decision will get made. Okay. Just to give a visual to what he's kind of discussing, the, the staff's requesting this kind of white perimeter that may okay. So just the logo of the Helios eliminates. So it would be allowed as long as the white was opaque. Correct. Correct. Do any uh, board members have specific uh, questions for the applicant? Uh, Dave, do you have any questions? Uh, no, just if the applicant has any other presentation or questions other than the um, accent band and the illumination. Um, no, I don't think so. The, uh, the property owner is still acquiring the, uh, the easement for the uh, area from the DOT where the sign is uh, going to be installed. So we've kind of, uh, I guess, pulled back from that portion until I know you guys need that uh, information before being able to move forward on the sign anyway. So um, I think uh, based on what we have uh, applied for, uh, size, illumination, and so forth on that, does that appear to be like it's going to be approved or um, this is the freestanding sign? Well, I guess, yeah, we'll get into discussion on that. Um, but the staff comments kind of suggested that it could use some, some more fine tuning. Okay, but um, let we'll just um, finish up with any questions, and then we'll kind of go into uh, discussion. Okay, Frank, do you have any questions for the applicant? I do not. Uh, Tara, no, no questions. I don't have any questions uh, either. Um, Carolyn, are there any members of the public that want to make a comment? No, sir, not at this time. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, so now we will go into discussion um, and we'll get comments from the board members, uh, starting with Tara. Uh, do you have any comments? Um, just overall, I, I appreciate staff putting together the report. Um, I think given that there are a couple of uh, precedents for this project, uh, in the county along the entrance corridor, uh, there that a lot of the recommendations made in the staff report are pretty well backed up. So I'm inclined to, um, I don't have much to add. That respect. So. Great. All right. Thanks. Could we um, put the recommendations up? Just, yeah. Is that large enough? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Dave, do you have any uh, comments? Um, no, no, I think like Taro, I appreciate um, Chris's report and you know support the, the recommendations in the staff report. Um, I think if other members saw a way to make this an administrative approval, assuming the applicant could incorporate the recommendations period, I would be in favor of that. Great. Uh, Frank, do you have any comments? No, no comments. Okay. Um, Thanks. I um, 
also um, feel the same way. Um, and also uh, thought Dave's uh, suggestion to move this to administrative approval was a, a good suggestion. I would support that as well. So it didn't sound like anyone had any uh, additions or changes to the uh, staff comments, but uh, if anybody does, um, now is your opportunity. I guess question oh. with, oh, I'm sorry. The uh, are we about to speak now or? Uh, yeah, I think so. If you have a, a request, I think, um, you know, we can certainly talk about it. Okay, thank you. Um, notice, um, you know, removing the uh, uh, the light bar on sides of the sign, not a problem. Um, uh, then having the, the opaque background on that is not a problem. Uh, now the side, the the sign, uh, as far as uh, consider revising the freestanding sign to a monument style sign with lower horizontal profile, um, which we could do a monument sign, but I understand you know, there needs to be some landscaping uh, around the base of the sign. And the concern with going with a monument style sign is that, you know, the vegetation can, of course, is gonna grow and it's gonna uh, block a lot of the, um, visibility on the sign. That's right without staying with the overall height uh, limit with 12 feet and then having the space at the bottom, it would allow, you know, for the landscaping uh, to be present. Um, this three feet of area there with the skirt on the sign. Uh, so it's no active area down there. And uh, yes. So we could, uh, you know, the landscaping could uh, wouldn't block any portion of the sign's visibility and still stay within the uh, 12 feet overall height. Uh, Sorry, Chris, are you indicating the, the proposed yeah. location? Yeah. It's I'm not sure, not sure what the mound of dirt is. I think it's probably important to emphasize the, 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 the comment about the landscaping um, associated with the freestanding sign isn't um, necessarily meant to limit it just to the right around the base, um, particularly given that there's that um, green space there. It's more, um, it doesn't have to be right up against the base of the sign, and preferably it would be something more, um, maybe spreads out some so that it sort of integrates it into that space better. So, I mean, I, the other way, you know, we could possibly put the sign, I mean, I, but that is just ironic that there's a mound of dirt there, but I'm, we, if we could, were allowed to do something like that and landscape would kind of be down the slope away from the sign, you know, just, just like I said, the concern is with a monument style sign in landscape, you know, the, the, the prices and so forth are so close to the bottom of the sign that it uh, doesn't take, uh, any height of vegetation to block the view. If they did a monument sign, could they do landscaping on the sides and not in front of the, the monument? Yeah. yeah, the recommendation is kind of uh, more so, less so the kind of traditional, where it's kind of front, back, and sides, just yeah. kind of a arrangement like Margaret alluded yeah. to of planting kind of in the vicinity of the side and with that one that was a, a consider so it's all what all consider is it's kind of yeah black and white yeah 
Yeah, so the, the way that comment is written is to, to consider the alternate style, consider the monument style right. within the landscaping, is to show landscaping to integrate the sign right. into the surrounding context, yeah. not just here. Monument or island. Yeah. Could you go back to the slide that shows the sign itself? So that middle image would be the show of, that shows the total complete sign. And the, the portion that um, is recommended to switch to brick, would that be that lower third of it? Yes. White, I think. So this question is for the applicant. Is that is that doable if you made that lower third of it brick? Uh, kept the Yes, it could be. It could be brick. I mean, it just uh, that's that's certainly possible. Because uh, I think the recommendation was to go with a more horizontal sign, but that didn't sound like a re a, re a requirement. Um, whereas I think the brick, they kind of tied that whole sign back, uh, make it look more like the building, um, seem like a stronger uh, recommendation, and. Um, you know, I, I, for one, would support that sign if it had uh, a brick base, if that was something that you thought um, was was workable on your end. Yeah, we can, we can certainly do that. I mean, we, and we can do a monument sign. It's not a problem. We actually got a design. It's a standard design for a monument type sign, which is what we originally planned on going with until we realized the uh, landscape requirement. I mean, I could say I could show you a the the drawing of the monument sign if you like guys like to see that or see you know which way you prefer let's go you know. you see that Chris before mm -hmm. but I think Chris you had that drawing there it is yes that was what we originally had uh uh sent in and uh then like i said we realized the landscape requirement and yeah. you can see how close how low that diesel price is to the ground right yeah that's practically on the ground yes yeah, it's, it's just a, well, about two inches really is the clearance that makes the more sense yeah could you raise that base a little bit we could raise the base Yes, if that would be okay. I mean, it could be a taller, you know, space there. Uh, but I mean, just you know, as, as I mentioned, it just it doesn't take very much landscape uh, to grow up even six inches. You know, just if to to have the benefit of the landscape without it blocking the view of the sign. Yeah, I think there are examples in the county of monument signs on brick bases. Yeah, maybe two feet. 18 inches or so that allow for low plantings. Yeah, I agree. You could put the whole thing up on a, a brick kind of pedestal, um, which would be one way to get it up away from um, any landscaping. Um, might make the diesel price a little more visible as well. It certainly would. And that way, if you know, like, I'm not sure what type of uh, landscaping you require. It's just, if it's just, unless it's just ground cover, anything you know, above ground cover would very quickly uh, block this, right? This design here. I, just, well, I think we're saying they can go either way, right? It's, yeah. It's, it's your choice. It's a, yeah. Consider. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, if we have to go with the uh, the landscape, uh, we would say go with the other taller sign uh, and go and go with brick, uh, the three feet of brick of the base. Is that uh, so? You all okay with that? Yeah, that sounds like it would meet the. Um... The recommendations in the staff report. So and to take the white bar off the side. Sorry. Take the white bar off the side. Yeah, take the white bar off the side. Yeah. And remove the light bar from the sides. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Light bar is 
referring to are on the, the free standing sign on the sides. Yeah, I think that would that, that'd be a nice look if if you all agree. That's uh, I think even even with um, some nice landscaping, it should it allow plenty of space there. All right, so I think if you're willing to do that, it sounds like that would um, meet the the intent of the staff comments. So I think we don't wouldn't need to modify uh, the staff recommendations. So uh, okay. we could um, go to a motion, um, or I guess one change I would consider just going back to. Um, whether it be a uh, board review or an administrative review. I don't know if that would require a change to the motion or not. Um, I, I have the motion um, set up for, for both of them. Um, my question for you all is, um, can you resolve the background information issue? On the, for the, on the main sign? I, I think there was agreement that that should be opaque. Motion would be so it sounds like all of the um, comments that were listed in the staff report are um, good to go. Um, the motion would be for approval of the certificate of appropriateness with the conditions listed in the Yeah. All right. Does anyone um, feel comfortable making that motion? We'll move um, for approval of the certificate of appropriateness for ARB 2022-97, the trading post with the conditions listed in the staff report. Okay. Anybody like to second that? So second. Thanks. Um, Carolyn, can we uh, do a vote? Yes. Mr. Vanderwer? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Mitsuno? Aye. Mr. Stoner? Aye. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So action items. Uh, there is one action item today. It is on the countywide certificate of appropriateness for the Uriah 29 form base code. Um, I'm going to have your presentation ready. Thank you. The uh, Board of Supervisors adopted the RIA 29 form based code and the overlay district down in September of 2021. And when the form based code uh, was being developed, uh, there was an effort to streamline the review process for sites that were both in the um, entrance quarter overlay and the form based code overlay. And um, staff coordinated with the ARB at that time um, on the standards of the form based code to help align those two processes. So the method established for streamlining was to add a category of countywide certificate of appropriateness for the form-based code area. Um, that was completed with the adoption of the form-based code. Um, and that's the highlighted, uh, the gray highlight that you see on the slide here in this um, text of the code. Um, this is a um, section of the entrance quarter overlay um, ordinance. It's the addition of a category of countywide certificate um, for development in the RIO 29 form based code area. As you know, the countywide certificates um, are application types that allow for streamlined review by staff. Those applications don't come to the ARB, so there's no staff report, there's no meeting, so it just helps streamline the process a bit. The entrance quarter section of the ordinance also provides for the creation of design criteria for each of those categories of countywide certificate of appropriateness. Um, although uh, the new category of um, countywide certificate was added with the adoption of the form based code, um, the ARB has not yet established the design criteria that goes along with that. Um, this slide shows um, it's here on the right side. Um, this is the list of countywide um, categories that exist. Um, this is just an example of the design criteria for one of those categories. This is additions to structures or improvements. Um, when there was already a certificate of appropriateness issued. 
It's just an example of one of the design criteria. So today we're asking you to adopt the design criteria for the RIO 29 form based code search countywide certificate of appropriateness. Um, the design criteria to be adopted will be the architectural design standards in section 20C.10 of the form based code. That section addresses transparency, facade articulation, materials, planting requirements, lighting requirements, and requirements uh, related to mechanical equipment. Um, so it's this section, architectural design standards, that will be used as the countywide design criteria. Um, we have a motion um, for you when you're ready to um, uh, do that, uh, but I would be happy to try to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks, Laura. Um, so we'll just go through. Um, uh, Frank, do you have any questions for Sam? I don't think so. Thanks. Um, Dave? Um, no, I appreciate uh, having this item and getting this work incorporated and the work that staff did to help us consider the uh, guidelines and standards. Um, and I'm, I'm prepared to support the motion to do this. Um, I did have one question, I guess, Margaret, for you. That is, in looking at this now, a year or so later after it was created, are there any things you think that this doesn't address uh, um, <laughs> that, that we may need to consider acting to add in? Yeah, that's a good question, and I think as we're starting to review the first couple of applications that um, come in, um, we'll have a we'll be figuring that out. I don't um, know of anything right at the moment um, that's missing, but I think we have a couple of applications under review, and as soon as we as we get through those, I think we'll know a lot more. And if we discover things that need to be addressed, can you remind us what will be the process to amend these, uh, and, and what will steps we've been required? Um, well, actually, but another really good question and that sort of depends on the well, the process would be the same um, but we're um, we are prepared to do a sort of phase two um, uh, code work on form based code um, so we are um, Mariah in particular is um, uh, putting together a list of um, fixes that are needed I don't know of any that exactly for the um, that are specific to the items that the ARB was most interested in when we did the work with you. But um, we are getting ready to start that work in, in the new year. Um, so it will be a zoning text amendment for, um, for, for anything that would change that code. And do, that, do those ultimately get approved by the board of yeah. supervisors or mm -hmm. without any action from us? Or? Uh, well, um, technically, that's right. I think they would need. Um, um, to have your input, but if it's something that was, um, I think, part of the uh, design standards, we probably want to get your input. Well, thank you. That, that answers my questions. Is this the only architectural design standard? That no, that's just a little piece, just but a, it, goes, it goes on. It was just a little materials. <laughs> yeah, it, it, of the things about facade articulation and mass yeah, and negative. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll be interested because I think a lot of it's quite abstract. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're happy to come and once we've made a little way through some of these, to come back and let you know how it's going. Yeah. Uh, Tara, do you have any questions? Um, well, so that was helpful. So, just to kind of clarify, I guess, uh, is that once we see, once you all see the set of projects that are coming through this process, there's a set of fixes or changes that might need to be made. Uh, those would go through the Board of Supervisors process. We might have input on any ch necessary changes to the architectural design standards. Uh, and if that takes place, we could re-adopt the amended architectural design standards for the countywide certificate of approval as well. To so basically have that track what the length, I, like I think it, yeah. generally, I think it makes sense for yeah. the countywide certificate to track what's going on in the mm -hmm. uh, zoning text. So right. Yeah. I don't know if legally you would have to readopt the countywide certificate if, if that portion of the code changes, but you know, uh, the point is to have it coordinate. So when you do that. So. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. And that that was really my only question too it was about process. So thank you. So uh, the recommended action would be um, 
to adopt the architectural design standards, uh, section 20C.10. Um, so would anyone like to make a motion? There was some trepidation, not knowing exactly how this was. Dane did it. Save the notes after the um, after the vote. So Form based code as a design criteria for the associated. Thank you. Uh, would anyone like to second that? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Carol, um, I guess we're ready for a vote. Mr. Stoner? Aye. Mr. Matsuno? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Vanderworth. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. So uh, now on to work sessions. Uh, there's one work session today. It is on the entrance corridor design guidelines agenda. Uh, Mariah, do you have your presentation ready? I do. Thank you. Okay. Happy New Year. Welcome back to the county. <laughs> um, today we're going to be reviewing the entrance court, the draft entrance corridor addenda for the Route 743 entrance corridor and its associated segments. So this corridor consists of Hydraulic Road west of Route 29 intersection and a portion of Earliesville Road south of Woodlands Road. There's a variety of building types, uses, forms, and scales here, but overall the corridor has a rural wooded character at the northern end and an urban commercial residential character at the southern end with a transitionary, transitionary area in between. We organized this, this corridor into three segments. I also wanted to indicate that um, you're going to see a line on these slides. The line indicates where the book binding is in relation to the sheet. So in this case, the book binding is to the right. There were some questions last time about how the document would lay out. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to um, start showing that. So the first segment is Earliesville. It's the portion of Earliesville Road. Um, it's a rural character with wooded frontages, deeply set buildings that are mostly residential, and a narrow, curvy two-lane roadway um, that is around the terrain. The one exception is at the intersection of Earliesville Hydraulic and Rio Roads. And this is the precedent imagery for that segment. And you see how the intersection at Earliesville and Hydraulic Roads are is, is different in character, but really with the way that we've done these segments and corridors, developments in those areas can choose um, which way they wanna fall. And we'll kind of explore more what happens at the intersections in later phases of the agenda, but just wanted to note that here. The second segment is Albemarle High, where the roadway becomes wider with four travel lanes and usually a center turn lane. There's a lot of diversity in this area, in large part um, because of the underlying zoning where the properties exhibit a rural character east. Oh, well, the properties that are east of the corridor fall within the development area and the properties west fall within the rural area of the county. So um, for properties within the development area, most of them are currently uh, zoned for residential uses, although there are many religious buildings along the segment. The most prominent development 
is Albemarle High School, uh, which has a very notable open view of the mountains as its backdrop. And then this is the precedent imagery slide for that. And Albemarle High School is the last image. And then the third and final segment is Stonefield, which is located south of Georgetown Road. The urban character becomes more consistent here when because both sides of the road um, or of the street exhibit highly visible development as buildings are located close to the street. Um, and then these are the precedent images for the developments, elements, and aspects that we wanted to highlight along the segment. So I'll, I'll go back. Well, actually, I'll show you the zoning just so you can kind of have it in your mind. This is, this follows Earliesville Road down to the intersection, and then this is hydraulic. And then at Georgetown, you see um, more urban zoning on both sides of the road. Or I, when I say more urban, I really mean just not rural area. Yeah. So that's the underlying zoning. And then I'll go back to the corridor slides so we can start from there. Right. Do you know what the city zoning is immediately adjacent to? I do not. But I can look at that. I assume it's some form of commercial ceiling. Sure. Um, along the street. Yeah, there's like a storage building. There's mm -hmm. a three-story office building. Uh, there's a veterinary. Drop off to <laughs> 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 So it does seem to be kind of commercial yeah, office. Yeah. Well, I think the identified, you know, segments seem to make a lot of sense backed up with the zoning it's kind of interesting um but i think it's also it's pretty intuitive i think the way it's organized it makes a lot of sense yeah i agree i think it's it's a good organization i i also agree i guess my only comment would be the um uh, on the last slide there are two photos of trader joe's and i was wondering if that and it may be that the captions are describing two different aspects of that. And that's why there are two photos that are fun. So I was trying to see if I could zoom in, um, but this middle image is just actually, is speaking to the geometry of the sign relating to the geometry of the intersection. And then the second one is about how the landscaping, uh, the effectiveness of um, using landscaping to minimize the visual impact of the parking area, and then um, the building form, material, colors, and details, um, kind of precluding the visual element of blankness against the, the wall. They really employed a lot of it, yeah, um, which was very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, please. Images were um, taken from Street View, so it's possible that we could um, go out to the actual photo to the sign and that, that would um, emphasize the sign and the image. Yeah, that mm -hmm. might be that. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, but I agree there's a lot that's successful there. And, and like that arbor body hedge, like there's a loading dock behind it or, or dumpster or something. So there is very effective landscaping. It may be that breaking that lower right went into like two or three different focus shots of the different strategies might help highlight them. So this was subject to ARB review when it came in yeah. originally. Yeah. 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 Lots of what before my time with Bruce Wardell was. Yeah. Be very good. Can we go to the, um, the map again? Just 
seeing this now. Oh yeah, okay. I guess I was just wondering about developments within that. I guess I don't know that anything is going to change in the stone field area per se. But uh, yeah, it all seems pretty consistent. If you're thinking about something in the corner, how you think about it with relation to the Seminole Trail corridor or this one, I think they both, I think it makes sense. Can you go back to the zoning? Mm -hmm. And Tara, you just mean how this this segment relates to this corridor? Yeah, I I, it, it, I was just for me wanted to see the corridors listed when we were talking about Trader Joe's. Oh, okay. <laughs> we know whether all the zoning on the on the west side of hydraulic is or all that property all flows to. The water is in the watershed or the reservoir. I think it probably and is because it's all down slope. I mean, I have a hard time remembering, like before you get down where high school, which is where it is the high school, the orange. Who is that? No. I think it's just past. But yeah, the intersection of Georgetown, hydraulic, that's like, it's recently built, but it, it slopes steeply up by, and then it slopes down to the whole high school complex. I think it slopes down everywhere. Yeah, so it is, it's all in the water. Are there any other uh, questions or comments? Just thank you for the continued work on this. Yeah. Um, one question I have, because I'm very torn in my own current commitment, is when do you run out of things to be <laughs> Just. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Can you so how soon? Uh, how soon are you? Do you still have yeah. a backlog of, yeah. of, of um, members' surveys of areas that you're other working through? Other members may be interested as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've got yeah. one corridor left that we have information you know, on that, that we are working on. Um, I'm actually going to recommend that we uh, cancel the January 17th meeting, um, and so um, uh, so early February would be. Um, looking at that, yeah. but we would need to have some more stuff coming in so probably, by February, right? And that's the last round, um, so we'll be done at that point, and then we'll circle back and kind of address revisions um, intro to the document. So there's actually we're run a few uh, other business items together here. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> last month, we uh, learned from BDOT that. The requests for the arterial status upgrades on, on some of those um, entrance quarters, they were all the ones we requested were approved. So, um, is that cool? is it 53? 53, yeah. So, so that actually adds some more work. So, it just... oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we'll have to uh, figure that out. But, um, did any developments happen on 53 while it was? Uh, I'm I'm just beginning the process of uh, figuring out where that is and how um, how we get back to um, um, reapplying the entrance quarter regulations in those quarters. So um, we're just we're just starting to figure that out. There's a lot of research that needs to be done in the county to figure that out. So we're um, as soon as we get it all figured out, we'll let you know. That's great, and that that means that basically VDOT's traffic count support the volumes that 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 are required to. I would assume so, yeah, but we didn't, I, I didn't see any detail other than the question. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Did we request Avon again? Yes. We did. 
well, thank you. I think as far as this item goes, I think it looks great. Appreciate Agreed. the progress. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all your work. Please. Yeah. Really, we're not getting enough. <laughs> yeah. the holidays. And actually, Margaret Margaret is a big butcher as well. So it's uh, shared. We need to get in, in line with that, I'll send an email out summarizing where things are and what still needs to be done and, and maybe some projected dates. So we'll move on to uh, other business. Uh, first thing is the approval of the December 5th, 2022 minutes. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to I'd approve? Like, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of December 5th, 2022. Anybody like to second that? Just a second. Thanks. Uh, Carolyn, uh, can we put that to the vote? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Aye. Mr. Mitsuno? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Vanderwerf? Aye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, the next ARB meeting is scheduled for January 17th, but it sounds like that may not. Yeah, so we don't have any regular review items for that meeting. Um, we could have some guidelines work to look at, but I, I would just suggest since there are no regular review items that we uh, just cancel that meeting and make February 6th the next one. That's awesome. Sure. All right. So, um, so the next ARB meeting is scheduled for February 6th, 2023 in Lane Auditorium. This will be an in-person meeting. Um, are there any board members who do think they will not be able to attend that? So we move back to the auditorium? Yeah, there was just a comment. Yeah. This is nice. That's good. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's good to have the shared table. You can just take it off. Yeah. The acoustics that we got in there, the, each location has its own kind of yeah. good, good points and bad points. Um, I, it's tough. I'm not sure which one to choose. I think it's is a it little, our option. Is it's a it little option or not? Um, Technology wise, is your downside. I have to say, from being on the outside looking in, there are times when I can't hear you all at all. In here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can hear you much better in Lane. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. then I guess for that reason. Yeah. Okay. But I agree that this format of being closer to one another and, and given the size of attendance. Yeah. Right. Have, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. We need, yeah. yeah. So, I think I think also Carolyn, um, this was this group's first meeting in this space, and it, you do need to speak at a volume that's a little bit unnatural. Um, so as groups have repeated meetings in this space, they've gotten a lot better at just adjusting and remembering. Um, so if, if that is an option. Okay, just let me know, and I'll make the changes if that's what y'all want to do. Um. I think we, we need to talk about it. Did the did you get how was your presentation? Did you get it worked out? Did I was go? able I was able to kind of make shift work work it out. It's, it's a little bit more complicated in this room versus uh lane. Yeah, so that's I'm comfortable sticking with lane. I mean, it sounds like there are acoustic goes. issues either way. So yeah, mm -hmm. just use acoustic issues. That's right. Yes. Yeah. As long as we can't hear each other. <laughs> uh, maybe what we can keep in mind is if you have some items that are more like work session -y, um, maybe you know, try for this yeah. room. Yeah. 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 But seeing as yeah, seeing as a lot of the applicants are now virtual, I guess it makes sense if we have a lot of those items to go back to me. Yeah. Plus, if you are attending remotely and, and you turn your camera on, you're like you don't. <laughs> Never turn your camera off. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah, really. yeah. In here? In there. In there. In there. Seven doesn't do. Yeah. All right. So we'll go to other items. Uh, sounds like there's one staff item, but uh, do any board members have any additional items? Nope. Okay. The staff item was the update on the arterials. So. Oh, okay. That's great. 
up. Um, so the meeting is adjourned until the next meeting on February 6th. Um, by my watch, it's uh, 202. And um, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Carol.